Hi folks, uh, the goal of this video is to learn how to use least squares to fit exponential growth and decay curves to data that look like the picture that we see right here in front of us. Uh, so uh, what you're looking at here is a plot of the growth of the Ebola virus in West Africa uh, in 2014. Uh, that outbreak started in late March of that year and what you see on the x-axis here is the number of days since the start of the outbreak and that's going to be the predictor in our model. On the y-axis here, you have the number of laboratory confirmed cases of Ebola over time. And you can see this curve obviously doesn't look linear. And, and uh, you know, for reasons of biology, you would expect this up to a point to grow like an exponential uh, curve. Right? And so uh, the idea is, can we fit a curve to describe uh, the growth of cases of Ebola over time? And if we look at the equation of an, of an exponential growth curve, or uh, you know, it could be an exponential decay curve as well, depending on the value of the coefficient, it looks like this. Uh, there's some constant alpha that just multiplies everything up or down. Uh, and then there is a rate term beta here. Okay, And so here, t, that's our time counter. So in this case, we're measuring time in days. So t equals 1 would be day 1, t equals 2 would be day 2, and so forth. Uh, you can fit an exponential decay or exponential growth curve on any time scale you want. Here we're in days. Uh, and then beta multiplies uh, the predictor t. Okay, so y is our response, the number of cases, and t is our predictor time. Okay, now it turns out this is a, a highly nonlinear function right here, uh, but it turns out that we can still use linear least squares in order to fit the parameters alpha and beta of this curve. Uh, and let's see how we do that. The, the short answer is that we take the logarithm of the response variable uh, and we fit a linear model to that new transformed variable. In other words, we run a linear regression for log y, the log number of cases, versus time t. Uh, and to see why that works, uh, let's see what happens if we just take that original equation, y equals alpha times e to the beta t, uh, and now I'm calling it beta 1, just to emphasize you know, that it's uh, connecting with the, uh, the idea of a uh, slope. Uh, if we take the logarithm of both sides of that equation, and what do we end up with? Uh, well, uh, just using the basic laws of logarithms, that the log of a product is the sum of the logs, uh, we get that log y, the log number of cases, is equal to this constant right here, log alpha, plus beta times t. Uh, and what's really nice about this equation right here, this is a linear equation. Uh, there is an intercept, log alpha, there's a slope, beta, which is exactly the same as the beta up here, uh, and then there's a predictor, which is t, and, and this says the log number of cases changes linearly as a function of t. Uh, and so that tells us that there's a very simple procedure in order to be able to fit the exponential growth curve uh, for, any, uh, for any response variable y. Uh, effectively, what we're doing is defining a new response variable. You can call it z if you want, log number of cases, log y, uh, taking the logarithm of the original response variable. Uh, and then you fit a linear model for that transformed variable, z equals log y, versus the original predictor, which is time. And we just do that using ordinary least squares. Uh, and so if we do that uh, for the data that we saw in the previous figure, uh, you can see here this is the log number of cases over time. And here it's base e, the natural log. In general, whenever we say log in statistics, we mean natural log. And if we meant the base 10 logarithm, we would explicitly say log 10. So here this is the natural log on the y-axis. And on the x-axis we have t, the number of days since the start of the outbreak in late March of 2014. Uh, and it's obviously not a perfect straight line, but the linear model does a pretty good job of describing the growth uh, over time. Okay, so that's, uh, and that has an intercept right here, and it has a slope. And if we want to know the parameters of that, it's uh, the intercept is 4.54, and the slope is 0 0.021. Okay, and so uh, that, that's really nice because now we can just go trans, uh, transform that directly back onto the original scale. Uh, if the intercept is 4.54, well, we can see that the intercept in our model up here is log alpha, where alpha was the multiplicative constant out in front of the exponential growth curve right here. So that tells us that, that multiplicative constant is e to the 4.54. That's 93.5. Just plug it into a calculator, and that's what you get. Uh, and beta is beta right here, same number, and that number is 0 0.021. And so that tells us that the fitted exponential growth curve is cases is approximately 93.5 times e to the 0.021 times days. And if you want to visualize that back on the original scale, it's up here. Here's days, here's cases, here's the data that we saw in the previous plot, uh, and obviously 
here's the fitted curve right there. And it doesn't fit perfectly, uh, especially towards the end where it looks like even the pace of, of growth uh, in the number of cases is accelerating a little bit, but it does a pretty good job of describing the overall growth of the number of cases of Ebola over time. So an important question here is how would you interpret the coefficient in the exponential model? Okay, and, and you know we've got that, that beta coefficient that's inside the, the exponential. Uh, and the way we'll interpret it is to calculate what's called the doubling time. Okay, and, and the doubling time is the number of time steps, in this case days, it's going to take for the response variable to double in size. And, and what that means, you know, what would it mean for something to double in size? Uh, well, it would be that the ratio of what it was at time 2, t2, uh, to whatever it was at time t1 was 2, right? So if you think of this is the number of, uh, of cases at time t2, this is the number of cases at time t1, and obviously the number of cases has doubled if this ratio right here, case, uh, cases at t2 to cases at t1, is equal to 2, right? Uh, and so the idea here is we just want to solve uh, this equation right here for the difference, t2 minus t1, and that'll tell us how many days it takes for the number of cases to double. All right, and, and if you again, if you just use the basic rules of algebra for exponentials, uh, and you know, that's several steps of algebra right here, uh, you churn through the mathematics, and I've linked those rules of algebra uh, you know, right here in the course packet, and you find that the difference, t2 minus t1, is equal to this. It's log 2 divided by beta 1. All right, and that's, uh, in general, how you would interpret the coefficient, uh, the slope in an exponential growth curve. Uh, you would take log 2 divided log 2 by the slope, and that whatever number pops out of that is going to be your doubling time. So for the case of, of the Ebola in West Africa, log 2 divided by the slope of 0 0.021 is equal to 32. So that say, says that the number of Ebola cases was doubling roughly once every 32 days. If we go back to the picture, uh, you know, that kind of looks about right. If we think about when it's hitting 1,000 cases right here, it looks to be about, you know, day 110. And when is it hitting 2,000 cases? It's about day 140. And so that's doubling from 1,000 to 2,000 in about 32 days right there. Okay? Uh, so uh, the algebra that gets you from here to here, again, is just a few lines, invokes the basic you know, high school rules of algebra for exponentials and logarithms. Uh, and this is the, uh, the good way uh, to interpret that fitted slope in an exponential growth curve.